Hello, this is Business Now and we're reaching you live from Ivan TV News Studio in Lagos, Nigeria. First, we'll bring you the headlines. IMF advises Nigeria and other emerging economies to prepare for turbulent financial markets. Reps at our committees investigate fuel subsidy and state of refineries. Chinese government plans to invest over 300 billion US dollars in the African continent. Car production in the UK falls to its lowest since 1956. Glad to have you join us on Business Now at this hour. My name is Margaret Opera. We begin with the International Monetary Fund's advisory to Nigeria and other developing economies. The IMF has advised countries with large foreign currency borrowings and external financing needs to prepare for turbulence in the financial markets. The Washington-based lender also said countries such as Nigeria should consider extending their debt maturities as a means to contain foreign exchange fluctuations. In a statement, IMF said, as the monetary policy stance tightens more broadly this year, economists will need to adapt to a global environment of higher interest rates. IMF further states that in some cases, foreign exchange intervention and temporary capital flow management measures may be needed to provide a monetary policy with a space to focus on domestic conditions. With interest rates, rising low-income countries of which 60% are already in or at high risk of debt distress will find it increasingly difficult to service their debts. And moving on, the controversy surrounding continued payment of fuel subsidy may not have ended as the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC Limited, on Wednesday presented a bill of 3 trillion naira for deliberations at a Federal Executive Council meeting chaired by President Muhammad Buhari. According to the Minister of Budget, Finance and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, 3 trillion naira is the amount required to continue to subsidize petroleum products for the 18 month extension recently approved by the presidency. A request for Council's consideration to make additional funding provisions to enable us to meet incremental for subsidy request in the 2022 budget. You recall that in the 2022 budget, as appropriated, we had made a provision of $443 billion for fuel subsidy for January to June. Having taken into account the current realities, increased hardship in the, in, the, in the population, heightened inflation, and also that the measures that needed to be taken to enable a smoother exit of the fuel subsidy are not yet in place, it was agreed by Council that it is desirable to exit for a subsidy. The Nigerian National Petroleum uh, Company, NMPC, has presented to the Ministry a request for 3 trillion naira as for subsidy for 2022. The House of Rep is taking major steps to address ongoing issues on fuel subsidy and the state of the nation's four refineries. The House set up two ad hoc committees at plenary on Wednesday to investigate the lingering issues with refineries with a view of finding a lasting solution to it. The two committees are mandated to separately determine the daily consumption of PMS in the country, the current state of refineries, as well as how much it would cost to fix and make them run at maximum capacity. They are to engage widely with all stakeholders such as labor unions, experts and operators in the sector. The committees have four weeks to conclude the assignment. And meanwhile, the recent suspension of subsidy removal from premium motor spirits, popularly known as fuel by the federal government, has continued to generate mixed reactions among Nigerians. Ibuja Equaria reports that while the government said it's for the interest of the people, some Nigerians see it as a situation of postponing the evil days. Oil in search of ways and means of neutrality. That, that ordinary Nigerian does not suffer any hardship. That when the subsidy will be removed, eventually it will be at such a point at which the hardship 
would be very good money and would have been taken care of. Practically, there is still heightened inflation and also removal of subsidies will further worsen the situation, thereby imposing more difficulties on the citizens. And Mr. President clearly does not want to do that. That pronouncement by the Senate President Ahmed Lawa and Minister for Finance, Budget and National Planning Zainab Ahmed was the news of the year for many Nigerians who were protesting against the hike in price of fear. They said the decision was in good faith. I think it's for the, it's for the good faith of the citizens because after putting all considerations and knowing that, okay, this might not be... Um, removing the, so the subsidy could affect a whole lot of things, especially, especially to the living of the citizen. So in consideration of that, they think they have to receipt or have a rethink over it. I think um, it's, it's of the good faith of the citizen. I'm, I'm very optimistic about that. Because this government is responsive government, they have to think, is it the right time to introduce the, you know, the, uh, to continue with the subsidy removal or not? But I know that even though election is coming for but that is not the main reason the the government is gauging the tempo the, the 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 pressure of the people they want to know if this is the right time or not and for every right thinking person or government this might not be a right time to introduce such policy in nigeria today a lot of us are under living under poverty and petroleum has been one of the uh, resources that has been a value added to every common man in Nigeria. So if the government decided to step down the subsidy on petroleum, I think they have really added a value to the majority of Nigeria. We are very, very poor. And with this, we'll be able to manage our economy. There are those who believe that the decision of the federal government is based on political interest. I think he has it political undertones. Um, because um, 2023 is just by the corner, we have, I think we have less than 15 months to the general election. And making such a crucial decision at this point in time, uh, I think it is detrimental and uh, it will batter the image of the ruling party. So I felt to a very large extent the suspension was politically influence to a very large extent. In everything a government do, there will be a little bit of politics. Well, uh, in as much I will agree with you that there's a little bit of politics in it, I will also say that that is all about governance. Politics is all about governance. Politics is all about for you to know the yearning of the people. The removal of subsidy on premium motor spirit was earlier scheduled for June 2022, but have now been suspended for the next 18 months. I, Boji Horia, reporting for Ibram TV News. Now, still on the failed subsidy controversy, the Nigerian Labour Congress in Oyo State says it has suspended the proposed nationwide protest. A while briefing John Lees at Oyo State Secretariat of the Nigerian Labour Congress, the NLC Executive Council Representative, Comrade Mike Olariwaju, said the Labour movement decided to abort its planned protest in response to the federal government's decision to suspend the proposed removal of fuel subsidy. You will recall that sometimes last year, the federal government uh, intend to increase the fuel price and some other things, to which the labor reacted, and we let them realize that it's a, it's a policy that uh, we not do the citizen any good. And uh, the labor at the national level precisely the Nigeria Labour Congress, wrote a letter to the federal government requesting them to rescind that decision. Otherwise, we mobilize ourselves and we'll be on the streets. Um, at the same time, we want to let them know the federal government suspended the whole thing for a time. Likewise, from our own hand. If, for uh, adventure, they come up with anything contrary to their decision, we should be on the street immediately. In as much directive has come from the national that everything be put on hold. From NSC office here, everything is suspended for now. This action was called for one agenda, principally to ensure that government reverse or rescind the intention to remove subsidy. And government have done just that. 
So as a responsible labor movement in the country, the TUC, the NSC, and they said, our, we have just met with our colleagues in the struggle, the civil society group, on the reason, on the need why we have to put this action on hold by ensuring that the removal has been put on hold. And so it is on this, pre on this premise that we have considered it expedient. And the interest of masses are not to further compound or to choke the economy. Away from that, the Senate Committee on Local Content has accused the management of the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board of alleged breach of local content laws. The panel accused the board of alleged dereliction of UT on its provision of the $10 billion drained seven gas project being executed by Saipem. Saipem is an Italian multinational oil field servicing company serving as the principal contractor involved in executing the Train 7 project. The Senate committee chaired by Senator Teslim following APC or Your Central based on petitions written against Saipem, some of the executive secretary of NCDMB, Mr. Simbi Wabote, for interference on perceived regulatory negligence. The summons, as stated by Senator Teslim following, at the beginning of the investigative session was sequel to a failure of Saipem to defend allegations of violations of local content laws in the execution of the ten billion US dollars gas project contract. Addressing journalists after the session, the deputy whip of the Senate, Wu Doubles as vice chairman of the committee, Senator Ali Sabi Abdullahi, APC Niger North said NCDMB would reappear before committee next Tuesday. Now the federal government has justified the decision to allow the deployment of the fifth generation, that's the 5G network in the country, saying that the global mobile data traffic, and in Nigeria particularly, is on the upward trajectory, increasing exponentially year on year. Thus, the federal government said there is need for an effective and cost-efficient network expansion to ensure optimal support for this traffic growth, with global mobile data traffic reaching a monthly rate of 56.8 exabytes in 2021, as compared to 3.7 exabytes in 2015. Besides, the federal government is also eyeing part of the 12.3 trillion Naira 5G economic output by 2035 and its value chain support for approximately 22 million jobs as estimated by Qualcomm. FMDQ Securities Exchange has announced that turnover in the fixed income and currencies markets hit 20.54 trillion Naira in December 2021 presenting a month-on-month -month increase of 29.89%, that's 4.73 trillion Naira. The figure represents a year-on-year -year increase of 31.86%, approximately 4.96 trillion Naira, from 15.57 trillion Naira achieved in December 2020. In its December 2021 edition of Fixed Income and Currencies, uh, FIC market analysis, FMDQ exchange also stated that total foreign exchange markets turnover during the period stood at 16.37 billion US dollars or 6.84 trillion naira, representing a monthly increase of 58.96% or 6.7 billion US dollars from 10.30 billion recorded in November 2021. And moving on, the exchange rate between the Naira and the US dollars at the official investors and exporters window closed at 416 Naira to a dollar while traded at as high as 444 Naira to a dollar before settling lower. The Naira gained further against the US dollar on Wednesday, albeit a marginal appreciation of 0.02% to close at 416.33 Naira to a dollar compared to 416.25 Naira to a dollar recorded in the previous trading session. The exchange rate has maintained an average of 416.69 Naira to a dollar since the beginning of the new year. And Forex turnover at the official market increased by 28.9% to 123.13 million US dollars as against the 95.52 million US dollars recorded in the previous trading session. 
Still to come, New Zealand's annual inflation rate tops a three-decade high. Details and more business stories after this commercial break. Swift Dry Cleaners Limited Professional Dry Cleaners Best in dry cleaning and laundry services That meets the needs of our consumers Yeah, Swift Dry Cleaners Limited Swift Dry Cleaners Limited Swift Dry Cleaners Limited uh, yeah. Swift Dry Cleaners Limited yeah. For clean wash and quick delivery Swift Dry Cleaners. Clean wash, quick delivery. <laughs> oh boy, winning you was so easy. I just couldn't stand those your powerful shots. That's what happened. <laughs> really? <laughs> Let's go to my place for dinner. Mm, this fufu is so nice. It's through unripe plantain flour. True unripe plantain flour is delicious. Yes, true unripe plantain flour is what I serve my husband for swallows. It's easy to prepare. Fortified with vitamin A, low in sugar and cholesterol, rich in fiber that helps the heart, builds and strengthens the bone, and his energy level <laughs> is boosted. Through unripe plantain flour, no additives, 100% natural, a product of Pali Agro Products Nigeria. Through unripe plantain flour, available in all leading stores nationwide. True unripe plantain flour is a 100% natural flour gotten from the processing of unripe plantain. It contains no addictive and has a net content of 500 grams. True unripe plantain flour contains vitamin A, B6 and C. It is gluten-free and rich in calcium. Consuming through unripe plantain flour helps to build and strengthen stronger bones and can be a great meal for diabetic patients. It decreases your chances of constipation as it has a high fiber content and provides you with a low fat diet. Here are some steps to prepare your through unripe plantain flour. Firstly, mix through unripe plantain flour with hot water in a pot and gradually add water till you achieve desired thickness. Place over medium heat and turn very well for 4 to 5 minutes to get the right texture. Mold into a bowl and place in a bowl and allow to cool. Serve with your choice of soup. Through unripe plantain flour, can be eaten with any variety of soup. Be it your ofe or ha, ofe or nubu, begiri, a wedu or your miyang kuka. To get your through unripe plantain flour, contact us at 12 Oluwera Isheri Road by first welder bus stop of Omole Phase 2, Oluwera, Lagos, Nigeria. Or call 070-6663-8213 or 081-6397-4447. Distributors are needed. And an Africa business scene, the chairman China Africa Business Council, CABC, Chief Dana Chen, has announced that the Chinese government is planning to invest over 300 billion US dollars in the African continent over the next three years. According to her, the move is expected to increase the volume of trade between Africa and China from the current 30 billion US dollars. Chen stated this at a memorandum of understanding signing ceremony between LCCI and CABC in Lagos. Chen also unveiled plans to establish 10 medical and 10 housing projects for African countries, 10 poverty reduction, 10 agricultural projects, while also reaffirming China's commitment to help Nigeria address its security concerns by providing military support programs. Leading gold mining company Goldfield Limited says it is expected, or rather expects to invest about 500 million US dollars into its Ghana operations in the coming years. The reinvestment which will go into the company's Demang mine is expected to increase the life of the mine from the current three years by some 10 more years. The acting executive vice president and head of Goldfields in West Africa, Joshua 
Mototi says Goldfield's contribution to government of Ghana's kitty will surpass last year's contribution of 320 million US dollars. Another foreign business scene, car production in the UK last year fell to its lowest level since 1956 according to figures from the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, SMMT. The SMMT said the figures were dismal, largely thanks to a global microchip shortage and disruption caused by the coronavirus pandemic. It said there was optimism for the future with the announcement of new investments worth nearly £5 billion, but it warned high energy costs would be a challenge for car makers this year. And more foreign business stories, New Zealand's annual inflation rate stopped a three-decade high at the end of last year, official figures show. The Consumer Price Index rose by 5.9% for the last three months of 2021, the fastest rate since mid-1990. That was higher than expected as it makes it almost certain that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand will take further steps to curb rising living costs. In October, New Zealand became one of the first developed economies to raise rates since the start of the pandemic. Coming up next is sports business. Sports streaming service DZN is doubling its monthly subscription cost in Germany to $33, effective from 1st February. Existing customers will not be affected by the change until 31st July, while those without a DZN subscription can still subscribe for $16.9 per month until January 31st. An annual subscription is available with a one-off payment of $310 up from the current $169. The increase arrives as the increase arrives after DAZN has spent heavily on expanding its soccer content offering in Germany. In June 2020, the service along with Sky secured the bulk of the domestic broadcast rights to the German Bundesliga in a deal worth $5 billion running from the 2021-2022 season until 2024-2025 season. In June, the company announced it will be increasing its monthly subscription price in Italy as well from $11 to $33.8 beginning from the 1st of July 2021. Total sponsorship rights fee revenue for the National Football League and its teams has increased 12% year-on-year to $1.8 billion in the 2021-2022 season. Despite the rise, the number of total sponsorship deals is flat and new partnerships declined after an uptick last season driven by the Los Angeles Rams, Los Angeles Chargers and Los Las Vegas Raiders opening new stadiums. The 2020-2021 campaign saw the NFL and its 32 franchises bring in $1.6 billion for the ongoing season. The NFL benefited from signing new partnerships with beverage company Diago and technology conglomerate Cisco. It has also been the first full season the league has worked with muscle recovery equipment manufacturer Hyperrise, as well as having Choice as its official retail banking partner. Telecommunications giant Verizon also extended its partnership with the NFL for 10 years. Furthermore, three new stadium naming rights agreements added to the NFL team's sponsorship growth. The home of the New Orleans Saints was renamed the Caesars Superdome in a $138 million deal, while the Buffalo Bills struck a stadium naming rights agreement with Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield of Western New York. And that's it on Sports Business. I'm Samson Oleide. And that's a wrap on business. Now, at this hour, for more business stories, please visit our website, follow all our social media platforms, and do well to tune in to Star Time Channel 143 for more interesting business news. My name is Margaret Opa. Thanks for watching.